poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. Welcome, 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 my friends, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, the founder of ChasingPokerGreatness.com, Coach Brad Wilson, and I'm joined by John because today is the tacticalist of all the days. How you doing, sir? How's it going? How are you? Doing well, doing well. What have you cooked up for the CPG listener and watcher today? This is a, a weird theme. Um... Basically, in both hands, something that I just never expected, or just something that I almost never see happen, something that I didn't expect, it's like a sizing or an action or something like that. And they both kind of feel a little bit fishy to me. Um, but at least this first one is fishy as playing... in buy a fish or. Yeah, yeah. Like one of them, I think, was definitely buy a fish. This one was, is actually someone that I know is a. I'm almost certain is like a very good reg. And I was just, I, I didn't know. Like I knew that before this hand happened and I didn't know how to interpret the hand. Okay. So yeah, right. weird things happening post flop. Yeah. John is gobsmacked by the unexpected. <clears throat> Let's see how you respond. Uh, so hand numero uno, you have the six and the four of clubs in the big blind. Uh, cutoff opens to 25. You're playing good old 1K and L, 510 no limit online. You defend from the big blind with a six and a four of the same suit. And looks like you're about 130 big blinds deep here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 55 in the pot. The flop is ace of clubs, sin of hearts, five of clubs. You check and the in position player bets pot. I guess we'll start here. Um, given what I know <laughs> about this, like player profile, completely not surprised to see big sizes on double Broadway boards as the pre-flop raiser. Um, I think this is just a, it's a very reasonable strategy to have just anyways. Um, you're going to have a massive range advantage on these boards. A lot of the strongest hands on ace, 10, five, I'm going to be three betting hands like ace 10 suited aces tens um so it really removes just a lot of the strongest value from my range i, I don't even have the strongest you know eight, top pair hands like ace king ace queen um so yeah i think like the imposition player can just start or the preflop razor can just start putting a lot of pressure on like my bluff catcher range and at the same time um you know just be could easily be value betting lots of very reasonable hands to value bet for the size given that that they have all those strong hands on this board all right so this is not the spot where you're confused. No, no, this is the unexpected. Fairly yeah, normal. I think it's yeah, tip just fairly typical yeah. big bet. Big bet on the these types of boards is the PFR. Uh so you have a flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. Mm -hmm. And basically no thoughts other than calling A. Should we talk about check raising? I mean, that's that could be like another ten minutes, but I mean we could talk about it. I I think that like I, I don't think it's great but i just think it's uh, yeah you can go ahead and <laughs> talk about it if, if you wish <laughs> i mean i think this is a board again like these double broadway boards where the preflop razor i think has a, has a pretty good range advantage um these are going to be boards that i'm going to have very few if any check raises on i think even if i had a hand like a set of fives for example or just ace 10 offsuit uh, i'd probably just do a lot of calling um keep my call kind of have strong. to yeah you, yeah you kind of have to right you can't like check raise your sets on this board because then if you check raise your sets well what do you have to call with on facing turn and river bets right. and villains already starting polarized <laughs> so those bets are going to be coming yeah. quite frequently yeah and then also like villain just has lots and lots of strong hands on this board that are not going to fold um just natural value that that bets big and it isn't going to fold and i think yeah targeting a range that has a lot of those hands um even with a hand that has equity, like a flush draw is, is questionable. Ill-advised. Yeah. So basically you're just calling here 
for trying the to make most a full part. Uh, I, I think like in general, like maybe you can have some like exploitative check raises with like bottom set if you so chose. I don't think it's like the craziest thing to do here because you, as we just said, like uh, if you're playing on a website where you can track information and build out player specific player profiles against villains, and I think like maybe you just want to have a flatting range, but even then, I think it's really difficult to be able to discern when somebody's like just has has a pure flatting range and then raises yeah. with top of range hands it's just like really really hard to pinpoint right. in the wild against a specific opponent so right. i wouldn't mind check raising with fives exploitatively um i don't mind calling with fives uh don't fold bottom set though mm -hmm. i think that's that's the one that i dislike yeah um, i agree with that one <laughs> um so you decide to go ahead and call because you have very narrow if non-existent raising range on the flop and now you turn a flush. So there is 159 in the pot. The board is ace, queen, 10, five, um, ace, queen, five of clubs. You check the turn and villain bets a third. Ugh, this is where I was starting to get confused. Not the size that I expected. I thought I'd see a lot of big betting and a lot, a lot of checking again on the turn. Um, just like, more polarizing, similar similar story to the flop. I thought, you know, just flushes and King Jack are going to bet big. Not exactly sure what, what he does with a hand like top set, but I think you could, it wouldn't be the end of the world to bet big with that hand or or, or check. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I was just kind of flummoxed by this small well, size I mean, here. Yeah, essentially they're just using a third for their turn size, right? They're... Um, we have to assume that they're doing this with most of range and probably have like two pairs and straights and sets and maybe flushes as well. Yeah. Really? Like, I, I it's okay. You could build a strategy like that, but like, if I'm in, I'm in this guy's shoes, like I'm just, if I have a flush or a straight, like I would just like to bet the big, the bigger size like i don't want to like handcuff my value because i want to bet two pair thinly or something on the turn but i don't know maybe this has more utility for some reason well okay so yeah. i mean the next thing we have to talk about is just like raising here with the six yeah. flush like I, I was i was not playing on raising pretty much at any point in this hand i thought that i was going to face either big bets or checks and versus the big bets i'm not going to raise and versus the checks i'm you know i'm just probably just going to value better late, later street if the turn gets checked through um so yeah here again like i was just like uh okay i didn't expect the small size like my hand is probably my exact hand is probably doing pretty well versus the small size do i want to have raises here probably not you probably don't want to reopen the action uh, at this depth especially fill -ins constructing their range in this way by betting a third All right like if they do bet a third with range and they just have you know king nine of clubs here yeah, in which case you're not doing well. Yeah. Um, okay, I don't know. So do you think? Do you do you actually think that they could be doing that? Like betting betting small with flushes and and straights. Like, just I, I get that 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 is a potential strategy, but like in your heart of hearts, do you actually think that 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 is what this person is doing? Probably. Wow. Okay. I I, I would imagine that they have a strat on flush completing turns after big betting flop. Okay. Okay. Choose to bet a third on the turn that that would be like that's what my my gut tells me okay. um otherwise it's kind of just like hard to naturally find the small size mm. you know um so you check uh four flush on river and now villain bets two three fourths yeah four something fourths. like that 194 into 262 <laughs> Yeah, four flush, run out, ace, queen, ten, five, eight. Now, congratulations, you have a flush. I think that this is a pretty, pretty much a snap on the river. I think it's somewhat difficult for villain to have, like, you know, it's essentially they're polarizing on the river, so they're saying they have, like, the king or not the king, it's hard for them to have... I mean, I guess they could have, like, King Jack off with the King of Clubs. 
Maybe they bet with the jack of clubs, king jack. Yeah, I think this size jack can, of clubs. can include the jack of clubs, right? Like if he goes like pot or over pot, I would say, okay, he's saying he has the king of clubs exactly. But I think this is a size where, you know, you can get away with value betting the jack of clubs for this size. Clearly, because yeah. I'm going to call with the six of clubs. Right. But it's hard to have the jack of clubs. There's not like how many hands actually have the jack of clubs here, really? <laughs> have to king open jack the, with the jack of clubs. Jack nine offsuit. Bet, big bet flop, small bet turn. Mm. I don't know. You said they're small bet turn with range. So. I don't know that. I don't know what they're doing. I'm not them. We could get them. Maybe you could call in and explain explain your strat here. Uh, if the villain you're playing against is listening to this episode of Tactical Tuesday, but I just I think that like it's hard to have the king of clubs. Like they need they could turn a flush I, I think there's you know king jack king nine king seven all the way down to like king four <laughs> king ten right, i guess i have a four but yeah yeah so a decent amount but i mean you don't really have to find a lot of bluffs or that many bluffs or lower equity hands to like bluff catch river so i i think like just i just call river and move on with my life Ugh, how does that like how do you like kind of mesh what you think about the range on the turn with like bluff catching the river because like the turn they're kind of saying i don't have any bluffs or very few bluffs, right? Yeah, I mean, if if it's their strat, though, then they're going to have some, like, king X of spades, like, jack X of mm. whatevers. Okay, um, okay. Like, I, I think they have, like, because it's the cutoff, they just have a lot of king X or jack X, yeah. those type of hands um, that go ahead and bet the turn and, they just wind up in their range on the river. Yep. Okay. Um, plus, I mean, you know, the small bet is is quite nice too because, like, if a lot of villains flushes or stronger hands can raise on the turn, then that lets their king x and jack x off the hook. Bet well, it lets their king x and jack x bet the river. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, 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 more yeah, yeah. profitably, like when they use a big size. Yep. Yep. So it could set up. You know, the, the turns small bet could set up like big river bets mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. various runouts. Mm -hmm. It's just that, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just that their line doesn't. I feel like their line starts becoming less believable for value when you when you do something like that on the turn and then being like, okay, well now I'm gonna follow up with a big river bet because I I know you don't have a good hand, but it's like really would you play like a good hand like that yourself? I don't know. Well, to be fair, their line doesn't make a lot of sense either way. You know, since you didn't expect it and haven't had much yeah, um, yeah. experience facing it, right? So it's hard to say, really. Um, I think the bigger takeaway would be like more investigation into villain's line here on this board mm -hmm. with this sizing scheme. Yeah. So what'd you do? Four flush, you have six high flush. I assume you don't fold. Just called, yeah. yeah. The deuces. Now that's a hand. Mm -hmm. I have. I'm not exactly sure what to think, other than they're just basically turning it into a bluff. Like it's just a yeah, yeah. On the zero, river, zero, I think it's fine. Equity. The, yeah, you can get better, lots of better stuff to fold by the river. But well, I think they have to be setting up the river by betting the turn, right? Yeah. Like so you think that that's what they're doing? It's like okay, I'm going to bet small here. A lot of flushes are going to be tempted to raise for this versus the small size. So once they don't raise, I kind of have the green light to go crazy on the river. I can't imagine them betting the turn and checking back the river. <laughs> Deuces, no club. Um, that <laughs> uh, we don't have to. We don't have to have this villain call in to the show to recognize that they're probably not checking back on a on a bunch of rivers with deuces here. Yeah, yeah. Well, interesting. All right. So, hand number two. More unexpected shenanigans mm. that John faces. Long story short, in hand number one, just make a flush and <laughs> call and hope for the best. Stick around. Flush, it's break. a good hand. Are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack? The CPG Wolf Program is a close-knit brotherhood hell-bent on one thing only, chasing poker greatness. Powered by Bleeding Edge Wolf Strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG Wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. 
If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com. All right. Welcome back to Tactical Tuesday, the day where John faces a bunch of things that he did not expect to face. John, you want to dive right into hand number two? Yeah. So I'm in the cutoff, ace check offsuit. Action folds around to me. I open to $25. Uh, player on the button calls. I don't know if I knew he was a fish or not at the moment. Um, but I think something that happens very soon will just confirm that he's a fish. Uh, so ace jack four rainbow. I flop top two out of position. Um, obviously a really good flop for my hand. Uh, just going to be doing a lot of checking out of position. Maybe just close to range check. I think it's just the easiest, easiest way to manage your ranges when you're. PFR out of position. Uh, player on the button, but it's $25 into 65. Um, I think I have a pretty comfortable check raise here with top two and just try to go for all the money. All right. That's what, what I this? do. The size looks relatively small. Yeah. I think I wanted to go small to like just make sure that, you know, I don't lose out. Because I'm trying to get called by like mostly one pair of hands here and gut shots, I assume. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, just which wanna, just want to keep like make sure like Ace Five stays in there and you know whatever. Yeah, I think Ace Five is probably gonna gonna be be willing. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, so like okay, I, I, I guess this guy's not not a rag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I clicked forward in the. Replayer and thinking you just call and remove all. Yeah, th yeah, think thinking villain just calls, but they actually bet three bet, and it looks like minimum, almost minimum, yeah, or yeah, actually three. no, exactly. Yeah, I think it's minimum. Yeah, so they bet three bet to one ninety two. Um, yeah, I think I just call and call them down. Okay, that was gonna be my question here. It's like, do you ever do anything other than call? Here. I don't think so. Because like, I think I, they're gonna stack themselves with like Ace Four, and when they have like random spazzes, I want them to just keep going. Yeah, that was my nightmare. Was that they do have Ace Four here some of the time, and like maybe Ace Four doesn't stack itself, right? Maybe like on a run out where it's like a King and a you know Eight, just like overcards to the Four. Maybe they just check back River or something, or, or yeah, do, maybe. Like that. But I think like. It's such a narrow range that you'd be targeting to bet three bet that I I would much rather give them some rope to do some wacky spewy stuff. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I ended up doing. I, I was honestly more like, <laughs> yeah, I was honestly more scared than like, oh, I'm, I'm just giving them rope to let them do wacky spewy stuff. I was like, wow, you really has a set of fours? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what like. What's the point of being scared? You're know, going broke. Scared. There's not yeah, a world yeah. where like you don't get stacked with these. I know, I know, so, I know. I mean, I'm just saying that like I, just my my honest mindset at this time was not like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna let him go crazy with like seven eight of diamonds. Like I was just like, oh man, I'm just gonna call my all stack, all my all my money at some point in this hand and just be shown two fours. Well, reptile brain took over. Yeah. Like yeah, you're obviously not folding top two versus a fish. Uh, I would imagine, um, <laughs> or, or anybody. Yeah. Oh. Just jam right, the river. So, okay, yeah. So I check call two twenty five on the turn. Yeah, turn it turns a six, six so ace jack six four rainbow. Four rainbow board. Villain bets two two five and a four fifty. John check calls, which I think is good. And the river they bet uh the river's a seven. They bet five hundred into nine hundred, leaving themselves with two ninety eight. Did you say Fucking jam river? Reptile brain on the river by me. Yeah. No, no, I didn't jam. I, I'm I'm guessing that's looking at this now, it seems like wouldn't force just jam the river. I mean, probably, but I think the biggest thing is like this three hundred dollars is what, what we're laboring over. Two seventy. Like, Two seventy. Yeah, so like even if 
um, even if you only get called by like 40% worse hands, the, the, oh, you only have 270. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a big loss. So, like, I think it's a situation where it's like, I don't know exactly what they can have that I beat, but there's only one thing they could have that beats me. Oh. And so I tend to, in those situations, just put the money in under the hope that they have some random thing that can call. Yeah, you know, maybe they just river at A6, A7, or something like that. Maybe just Who knows? Ace King maybe. just calls it off here. Yeah, maybe they have Ace King or Ace Queen or Ace 10 and they just doing something really weird. Yeah. I just reptile brained it and was like, eh, I'm not getting stacked by fours. I'm saving my <laughs> 270. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't stack ace queen. So <sighs> uh, you, you called villain had ace queen. So like, I, I think that this is actually quite an important thing. You know, there's w- one realistic hand that beats us. We don't know what calls the jam, but we have to assume that there are hands that call the jam. Yeah. Like ace four. For example, it's just going to call it off. And like When they show ace-queen off, this call becomes such a punt, like such a massive punt when they just have like one other hand that you didn't consider. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Well, yeah, if, next time I'll just, I'll, I'll make sure I lump in the ace-queen next time I get bet three bet on. <laughs> Ace-jack four. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think mostly it's just considering like, oh, they only have one realistic hand that beats me. Maybe they have some unrealistic hands that I beat that I'm not even yeah. considering. It's really easy to make a mistake by just calling here. Yeah. Really, uh, really, really easy. So uh, I just prefer to. I think I'm just like, yeah. I'm embarrassed to admit that, like, on the river, I'm pretty sure my reaction was like, oh my God, thank God he didn't jump. Call. <laughs> well, you won the minimum. Yeah. Congratulations. Getting getting better every day. That's why I do Tech getting, Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, good episode, sir. Thank you for listening. And subscribe. Join the village. Do all the things Comments. that you need to do. Comment, like the YouTube video, youtube.com slash Chasing Poker Greatness. If you listen on the podcast and haven't checked out the YouTube yet, uh, I think that the visuals of the Bean episode are more than worth a subscription and a checking out of the Chasing Poker Greatness YouTube channel. <sighs> and uh, Yeah, it was worse all, than this hand. That's all I have for this week. See you next week. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community. Book a coaching session or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.